The topic of this video is the dimensions of the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid of Giza. While studying the exact measurements of this pyramid, we will discover what kind of mathematical masterpiece it actually is. Even the chamber is hidden inside the pyramid. It truly includes the mathematical treasure or treasures. And these things that we will discover are remarkable. At the beginning, let us draw the base of the king's chamber. There are already four dots on the paper and these dots help us for drawing the actual image. That is King's Chamber. These are the shorter sides of the chamber. Then we just unite the edges. They are only, these are only approximations. Uh, the si simpler way to demonstrate things with free hand and without ruler and compass. It is important to notice that it doesn't matter what unit of measurement we use in the demonstration. We could use meter, kilometer, millimeters, miles, inches, feet etc. And we would still have the same geometric shape. It is free of any units of measurements. While further studying this geometric shape, we will discover it to be built with dimensions of 1 to 2. It means that this shorter side is 1 and this longer side is 2, 2 times the shorter side. Thus it is 1 to 2. We can also have the king's chamber. Let us mark that with the tiny dots over here. Because of halving, we have two exact squares with the side length of one in each. A square is the fourfold shape, which all sides are equal in length and all the corners are right angles. Here all the side lengths are one in both of these squares. Now we have the starting point the foundation of the king's chamber. We can mark the ones here or wherever we want. Now we can begin with the first of these two remarkable mathematical treasures. We will do it by dividing the king's chamber again, but in the different way in two equal parts. Let us divide it in two equal triangles. No more squares, but triangles. To have two triangles with equal arrows, we must divide the chamber from the lower left corner to the upper right corner. Here is a sort of center point and this dividing line will go through it. Now we are highly interested of that what is the exact measurement length of this dividing line. It is helpful to notice that this is indeed a triangle with the right angle. 
That is why we can use the Pythagorean theorem. It states that the square with the side length of hypotenuse is equal with the sum of the squares that have side lengths of shorter and longer catheters. It means that when we mark with x this hypotenuse, the square of that x power 2 is equal to the sum of these shorter and longer catheters. So we have 1 power 2 and 2 power 2. Then we just solve the x. And thus we will have in square root 1 plus 4 is equal to square root of 5. We can mark it, mark it here too. The x is the square root of 5. This is very remarkable number. And it is the number that helps us to reveal the exit colon ratio. This is possible to do with two different ways. The first way is to just look these elements and their lengths. We have the shorter catheters, that is 1. Then we just add the hypotenuse to it. Hypotenuse is square root of 5. And then we count the average of these two measurements. So we have a distance that is 1 plus the square root of 5. Then we want to know where is the exact half point of this distance we have. Well, it's somewhere here. This is how we calculate the exact half distance. It is 1 plus square root of 5 divided with 2. Simple. But now we have the exit measurement of the coloration. So the average of these two is the exact golden ratio. Not the approximation, but the exact value. Another way to have the same result uh, is to think with the relations. When we take the shorter catheters, that is 1, and sum it with hypotenuse, that is square root of 5, and then think about the relation with the longer catheters, that is 2. Again, with this triangle, we will have the exit called the rest. 1 plus square root of 5 divided with 2. Again, it is not an approximation, but an exact value. Even there is already a lot, this is still not even the half of the mathematical potential of the chamber. It is worth of mentioning that this square root of 5 is truly built here on purpose. There are even some science papers that claim that the height of the king's chamber is also related with the square root of 5.
and if the height is also related with this number it is of course great evidence that this all is made on purpose then we go to another another section the ancient egyptians preferred the rope while they made some geometrical studies and calculations e.g. the first right triangle right angle triangle was made with the rope that had 12 knots uh, with the equal gaps and when you have a rope with 12 knots then you can divide it like there are the so-called three, four, five triangle that has the right angle. And that is actually the story about first right angle triangle. When we think this way of measuring with the rope, we can use it here too. Our rope could be size of one that is this shorter wall then we could turn over the rope we still keep the tip in the right down angle but now the other tip will be in the mid of the longer side then we could have someone to hold this tip here in the middle or we could place a rock upon it whatever then we could just rotate the rope here inside the king's chamber as a result we would get something like this we would rotate the rope first to the top part and correspondingly then from the top part to the other side the right corner again like this by using the rope length of one and rotating it we have the half circle we already know from the calculation rules concerning the circles that the perimeter of circle usually marked with p is equal with the two times pi times r where r where r is the radius of the circle our radius in this case is indeed the rope to the length with the length of one that is why r disappears we know that no matter what number we multiply with 1, it is still that same number. That is why R disappears. Then we notice that we don't have the full circle here, but in matter of fact, we have only half of it. That's why our perimeter is also only half of the normal perimeter. We will have the same situation in this equation when we divide both sides with the number 2. How then? We want to have the half perimeter. Now we have this situation where we have half perimeter equals width. 2 pi divided with 2 that is of course pi thus half perimeter in our image is pi the exit exact measurement of this bent line rotating in the king's chamber is pi once again, it is not the approximation of pi, 
but the exact length of pi. It is here demonstrated that there are the both quarter ratio and pi in the pyramid. Quarter ratio was formed with the triangles and pi with the rotating rope. Speaking of these two measurements, we can say that these are two very important issues of mathematics. And both of them, not only one of them, but both of them, are present in the base of the king's chamber. Both of them are not only approximations, but they are the exact values. That is why the king's chamber is the mathematical masterpiece. It includes just the right dimensions for producing and announcing these two mathematical treasures. No matter how we would calculate the probability for this to be only coincidence, this probability would be very low. King's Chamber is built on this way on purpose, concerning to the coloration pi, it is here proved with the terms of mathematics.